When playing through this series of the Resident Evil franchise, the last question I ever thought was, hmm, I wonder what Rebecca was doing before Resident Evil 1. Well, apparently Capcom thought we did, and thus Resident Evil 0 was made. And while playing through this, while not drastically offended by the game as a whole, it seems obvious to me that this game was made to test certain features, to throw shit at the wall to see if it worked or not. And for me, it mostly didn't. In this video, I want to discuss Resident Evil 0, a black sheep of the franchise in my opinion, and one that messes with a lot of the core design tenets that Resident Evil built its bones upon as a series. Much like a house, when you mess with the foundation, the entire structure begins to basically split open and fall apart, revealing how integral a lot of these systems actually were. If you enjoy this type of content on game series new and old, be sure to subscribe down below and in the comments let me know what your thoughts of Resident Evil Zero are as well. Turns out my Code Veronica video was mildly contentious and you guys were arguing in the comments the entire time, so I do ask that we do keep it, you know, mildly civil and try to be nicer to each other. But for now, let's dive into what makes this game forgettable at best and not good at worst. This is the Resident Evil Zero Retrospective. We open with a pre-rendered cutscene on a pretty fancy train, occupants having a good fancy old time as much as they could in 1998. As a swarm of very gooey leeches comes and attacks the train and attacking the passengers, we spot a man, a very gray man, watching the scene from the cliffside above, singing a haunting choir song, as the leech infection occurs below him. Two hours later, we see the helicopter of the RCPD's Stars Bravo team zipping over the forest, here to investigate reports of cannibalistic murders and animal attacks here in the Arclay Mountains, a fact we learn in the original game of the series. Rebecca, along with the rest of the team, home the forest to stumble upon an MP van, or military police for those uninitiated in military lingo, the soldiers killed and its prisoner, Billy Cohen, nowhere to be seen. Assuming that Billy himself had killed the MPs and escaped off into the forest, Captain Enrico tells the team to search for Billy as well, as he is armed and dangerous and was wanted for murdering a bunch of villagers while deployed overseas. Rebecca wanders alone, which I'm pretty sure is against all police procedures, and stumbles on the train we saw before, and upon exploring is attacked by Resident Evil tried and true zombies. We begin to explore the train, finding finding Billy in the process, and upon saving her from a leech man on the upper deck of said train car, the two begin a tenuous relationship to escape the train and let stars know what's happening in the forest. While exploring, we run into giant scorpions, more zombies, more leech boys, and puzzles galore. I like the setting of this abandoned train as the detail in this area is absolutely stellar, and the puzzles really do feel akin to something in the Spencer Mansion. Nothing out of the box for Resident Evil, mostly just searching for keys, items, and a zipline gun to explore higher areas with no ladder access. This area feels pretty realized, and while the space is a a series of cramped train compartments, it's pretty fun to explore. However, we're also introduced to not one but two of the drastic changes here in this outing of Resident Evil, both of which I'm not a big fan of. Up until this point, the item box has been a staple of the franchise, located in the safe regions of the play space and allowing the players to drop off unneeded items and materials to free up more slots for other stuff like key items, health, and ammo. We lose the box in its entirety in here in Resident Evil Zero, and in its stead we're given the ability to drop items on the ground to be picked up whenever they're actually needed. This change to me just pretty much much sucks and adds to a convoluted mess of systems when grabbing items you need. Not only did the item box serve as a storage space for the players, stashing away items like pack rats looking for nuts on a rainy day for when they're actually needed, but it also created a place of respite and relaxation, an area that was essentially safe for the player, an area that where you could save, unload your stuff that was unwanted at the time, and plan your next run out into the zombie infested area. Instead, you choose basically wherever you want that you think may be safe, toss your shit on the ground, and run back to said room whenever you need it sometimes all the way across the map, rather than from another item box closer to your location. This leads to vast amounts of backtracking, which I know is a staple in Resident Evil, but there's a certain way of doing it, and in this game, it just made it feel convoluted and messy, to say the least. And with each item tossed on the ground marked on your map, this became a vast quantity of visual clutter, both on the map and on the floor in which you stored your items. There were a number of times in my playthrough when searching for a key item or a first aid spray in order to continue forward that you would have to sift through all the bullshit you dropped on the floor, your rat pack collection of crap sprawled around the central area of the play space you're currently in to try to minimize as much running back as you possibly could. This type of inelegance when designing an item system makes me wonder why this method was taken rather than the item box we were so used to in the series thus far and pretty much worked. There's an argument to be made that this approach is quote unquote more realistic, however I do contest that this is a game where leech men have turned into humans and there's also zombies and leeches taking the form of more humans and also this is a fucking video game that is meant to 
at least have some mild enjoyment of playing. Realism when it comes to item management sucks, and with a game's main purpose being to entertain, I just don't understand this change. Not to mention we lose the amazing savory music that we've been so used to in the Resident Evil franchise thus far, which is a tragedy in and of itself. The second major change comes with the quote-unquote buddy system. That is, the introduction of two characters being controlled in the game. In Resident Evil Zero, you play as both Rebecca and Billy, each with their own pros and cons, Billy being able to deal and take more damage, while Rebecca can mix herbs together in typical Resident Evil fashion and create more healing style. And to be honest, this mechanic had some promise, albeit this rendition is pretty clunky. With a simple press of a button, you can swap between either character at any time in separate rooms anywhere on the area to solve puzzles, explore, and killing zombies. And while this does lead to interesting interactions with the game world and puzzle solving, Billy giving Rebecca a boost here and there, and Rebecca being able to mix all the healing items for the pair that they need, I found it to be a lot more frustration than the word payoff moments. For example, when one character dies, you get the game over, pretty self-evident. However, with the AI being as clunky as it is and only being able to move and shoot, there was almost no reason to leave the other character behind unless the progression dictated that you must. It also seems that this game was meant to be a co-op experience, and according to some prototypes that I was reading online, it was. Now, this would have been infinitely better to give the option of co-op, especially realizing at the time that co-op was king. Keep in mind, this came out in 2002, a year after Halo 1 and a bunch of other games that were supporting co-op had come out on. However, this was not meant to be, more than likely due to hardware limitations on loading two areas of a map at once, utilizing the split screen, as online really wasn't that prevalent at the time. Instead, the two character system feels clunky with item swapping taking what felt like a million button presses and item management being made that much more cumbersome with two inventories to keep track of rather than one. And while I respect the idea, something we will see more fleshed out coming in Resident Evil 5, this in this game feels like a pretty big miss. Not to mention horror of any variety is diminished with more good guys on screen or in real life. Gameplay wise, minus these two major changes are pretty much the same as it ever was. Fixed camera angles, inventory management, herbs, bio mutants, and kind of lackluster shooting. So if you've seen or played any other Resident Evil games, you pretty much know what to expect here. As we move through the train, Umbrella agents infiltrate the main engine car and start the train up again while under orders from Wesker to move the train for further investigation on what occurred and how the T-Virus made it to the train. As the leeches envelop the Umbrella soldiers, Billy and Rebecca stop the train and depart, entering an abandoned Umbrella training facility used to train new executives and workers and researchers to the company to its secret goings-on, otherwise known as Biomutant Research. Moving through the training area, chemical plant, attached church, and water treatment area, we learn of the creation of the T-Virus, or as it was originally termed, the progenitor virus founded by Umbrella's co-founder, Dr. James Marcus, who after supplanting the T-Virus into a series of leeches was assassinated by Wesker under the orders of Oswald Spencer of the Spencer Manor, also known as the other co-founder of Umbrella, in order to steal said virus. As Billy and Rebecca have learned what happened, they begin to learn more about each other, much like a buddy cop movie. Billy being accused of war crimes for murdering innocent villagers, and Rebecca just being a STARS member. Not following the orders of killing them, the massacre was pinned at his feet and he was wrongfully tried for said crimes and was in transit, assumingly, to be taken to the firing line. It is here that we need to discuss Rebecca and Billy for a moment, and the vast opportunity wasted here. If you're a veteran of the series, you remember Rebecca from the Chris playthrough of Resident Evil 1, the rookie STARS member and a medic of the team, who concocted the antidote for Chris, helped murder the evil Plant 42, and learned to play the piano to open the door while by practicing while in the middle of a zombie-ridden mansion. So the idea of visiting her again in this prequel title, you would think that there would be a little bit more fleshed out about her and her character, and if you assume that, you would in fact be wrong. Rebecca is just kind of thrust in this entire scenario with little fanfare and after saving her from the leech, is just decides to blindly trust somebody who she believes has murdered a bunch of people in cold blood. Billy gets a little bit more exposition here, giving his backstory as to why he was there, but even then, not much is really expounded upon about it. A series of foils for the players to interact with the world itself. Positioned as a prequel to learn about what occurred before the Spencer Manor incident, you would think that there would be a few more ties to the original game as well, and there really just wasn't. I'm sure I'll hear in the comments how wrong I am, and please leave them down below, as I very much could have missed something in all this. I'm I'm not expecting Yakuza Zero treatment here, which acted as a prequel to that entire series and really flushed out how Kiryu and everybody got their starts. But some tethers here would have been nice. While learning more about Umbrella and its founding, as well as the creation of T-Virus is cool, that information does boil down to lore, which you don't need a full game to do. And to be clear, I think the lore buildup around Umbrella is pretty fucking dope. Learning of the creation of the T-Virus, using the leeches to be the original carriers is interesting, and the betrayal of the co-founders is fascinating as well. And the inclusion of Wesker 
Baker and Birkin from Resident Evil 1 and 2 allows for the characters we know to grow a bit more. However, how is Wesker and Birkin looking at the events of Resident Evil 0 while supposedly Wesker is with the STARS unit, more than likely prepping for the Surge of Bravo team after their chopper went down? It does raise some questions in the continuity of the timeline. It's a small nitpick from somebody who's looking too hard into things, but it did bother me a little bit, but you know. One thing that has been the focus of the last videos has been the setting of these games, and honestly, I like the areas here in Resident Evil 0 as a set piece. As mentioned before, the train feels a lot like a condensed version of the Spencer Manor for me, and while exploring the training facility and seeing the lecture halls of Umbrella with its libraries and laboratories full of genetic experiments and creating bioweapons is pretty cool and harrowing at the same time. The amount of detail in the scenery is pretty impressive for the time as well, having moved away from pre-rendered backgrounds of the first three games and now having a fully rendered in-engine like Code Veronica. For this video, I was playing the HD version of this game, which allows for much more dynamic and better lighting and a little bit more texture polish here as well, as it is the easiest way to play these games from coming to modern consoles and PC. I like the look of Resident Evil Zero a lot personally, and unlike Code Veronica, the locations of Zero do make a bit more sense location-wise. With the church only being the real outlier here, having the entire umbrella training facility, chemical storage, and water treatment areas connected feels intentional and meant to be mushed together as opposed to Code Veronica, which had a military base, a mansion, a submarine base, and then going to Antarctica. Just that one felt like all over the place where Zero feels a lot more condensed like you would actually go to these places. Like it was all part of one facility. And there's a ton of environmental storytelling here as well, from seeing the humanoids in test tubes, gas chambers for failed experiments, and different areas housing different bioweapons, all give depth to the location of Resident Evil Zero. On that note, this game nails it out of the park, and while I wish I had some better characters here, keeping with the first Resident Evil traditions, these locations become more of a character in and of itself. And while not hitting the bar of the Spencer Manor or RCPD station, it, this one is pretty good to me, and honestly far better than Code Veronica ever could be. While the location itself is pretty good, Resident Evil Zero feels drastically lacking in anything actually narrative related. Short of the cutscene in which Wesker and Birkin see the Leech Marcus, Billy's backstory, and the confrontation of Leech Marcus at the end, it doesn't feel like anything has actually happened here in Resident Evil Zero. It comes across as Billy and Rebecca wandering the halls trying to find a way out. We do run into Captain Enrico while searching for Billy, who got knocked into the water by a biomutant ape, and he tells Rebecca they are meeting at the mansion as she runs off to find Billy, but short of that, nothing really happens other than solving solving puzzles, killing zombies, leechmen, and multiple bosses, all of which are basically mutated animals, the original tyrant and the leech queen not included. The bosses here are pretty easy as well, not posing too much of a challenge, which was a kind of another gripe that I had with this game as a whole. That would be the difficulty curve of the leechmen scattered around the area. In short, fuck these guys. If you have molotovs, they're not much of a problem, minus the incredibly long wind up time to toss one and you need three to kill them. But if you're just blasting away in the tight quarters, these guys are tankier than anything in Resident Evil so far, including some of the bosses, leading to multiple deaths to these assholes as well, because they pack a fucking punch. So much so that by the midpoint of the game, it was more viable to just take the hit and run by them more often than not, avoiding these confrontations altogether. And while that does work for resource draining and creating tension, there are certain points where there are like three or four back to back, and needless to say, highly frustrating to basically running around expending everything to kill three guys. I like hard games, the challenge isn't bad, but throwing a ton of super tanky enemies just back to back isn't good game design and just plain sucks. The last encounter with the Leech Queen, however, was a pretty cool fight and stand out in my opinion. Having a large space to work in, this fight does utilize both character mechanics pretty well. Rebecca opening locks to open the skylight, while Billy tries to keep her distracted by peppering the boss with bullets. With a wide open play space to this boss, while gimmicky is still satisfying to do, and the change of pace with not actually killing the boss with your guns and ammunition, but having interaction with the map itself was pretty cool in my opinion. Losing the trope but just blowing things away with a rocket launcher at the end of Resident Evil game. All in all, this fight was pretty awesome, and with most boss encounter arenas being more open like this one, it really didn't lead to any of those feeling nearly as unfair or frustrating as Code Veronica, which is a good thing. After defeating the Leech Queen, Billy and Rebecca escape into the forest, and after a touching scene of Rebecca taking Billy's dog tags and declaring him dead, allowing him to escape and roam free, we see her head down to what we now know as the Spencer Mansion to enter and begin the events of Resident Evil 1. And while there are parts I enjoyed my time with Resident Evil zero from the locations, lore building, and boss fights, this game did a pretty good job, in my opinion. However, with the item box change being as abysmal as it was, the two character mechanics feeling more cumbersome than they needed to be, and with almost no story or characterization dragged this game down for me a lot, in my opinion, making it honestly more of a slog to play in the moment to moment than any other game in the series thus far. I respect the desire to change up the formula, and as we'll see in Resident Evil 4, it could be done with variable or even in that case, pretty good success. However, that did not hit with this outing of the Resident Evil franchise by 
far. This game is a mixed bag for me for sure, but this is just one man's opinion. What did you guys think of Resident Evil Zero? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button as it does help get this video out to more people. And if you want more content like this, please, please subscribe to the channel if you want to help help grow this channel. I'm making a push to try to hit a thousand subs by the end of the year, so every little bit helps and it would be greatly appreciated from the bottom of my heart. Plus, I heard that it makes you a little bit sexier too, so you should just try doing it because we could all be a little bit sexy in our lives. Moving on from this, we enter the next phase of Resident Evil, which starts the era of 4, 5, and 6, leaving behind tank controls in the past and moving on to what is known as the dark era of Resident Evil, short of what is known as the goat of the series Resident Evil 4. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check that video out when it releases. And until then, stay sexy, stay awesome. And as always, my name is Brendan, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.